Well, are you a fan of fast fashion or you are someone who likes to buy a lot of clothes, maybe does not wear it more than once and then gives it away or it's somewhere there in your cupboard? I'm not trying to tell you not to shop, of course, that's not the motive. I'm just trying to tell you how your consumption habits when it comes to textiles impacts the environment. There's a lot more. We've spoken about how textile waste is not properly treated, it's there in landfills and what kind of pollution it causes because it's not treated well. So I have someone very special on the podcast today who is going to explain to us what's happening in the textile world when it comes to pollution, when it comes to climate change and how a lot of these organizations are solving that issue. I have with me Manura Dillon who is the CEO of Okai and she's here with us in the studio. Such a pleasure to be speaking with you and something that everyone will relate with, right? Uh, so let's try and understand how big is this issue of textile pollution. Hi, Sonal. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think it's a great conversation that we are going to have. And this is a very important topic that everyone should be discussing in their casual settings yeah. at home as well. So uh, textile waste is a very, very critical issue right now. It is the second largest polluter in the world and at 10% emissions only after oil companies. And a major, a major part of this is not just at a production level of raw material, but also at a consumption level. So this waste is not just being generated by the factories that are making these products, but also people that are buying these products and throwing them away. To put it in perspective, it is uh, polluting so much that if we put together all of the airlines that fly internationally and all of the maritime shipping together in one year, the amount of emissions that they create, textile still creates more emissions in a single year. That's such a big amount. Yeah. And you know, as we were we were just talking about it as well it's something that everyone would relate with uh, there are just like discounts every other day there are uh, so many uh, options available now when it comes to textiles as well um, what is the issue then if we are talking about uh, it being the second biggest emitter after oil companies um, on the consumer side is it not being treated properly or on the supply side what are some of the issues that you can highlight I think I'll just take you broadly yeah. through the value chain yes. at, at this point mm -hmm. so it's essentially starts at a production level. So textile companies are making uh, textile raw materials to convert into uh, any kind of apparel or other go textile goods. At a raw material manufacturing level, one, they're using a lot of polyester. So mm -hmm. at a material level, it is an unsustainable mm -hmm. material because it cannot be biodegraded. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, there is a huge amount of like the textile industry is known to be a massive user of water mm. and toxic chemicals in the dyeing and finishing processes. And invariably, there are these chemical runoffs that go into the rivers and other water bodies surrounding these ecosystems. So there's pollution at that level, both in air and at wat and in water, mm -hmm. which causes a lot of harm to the environment. Mm. Uh, there's also overproduction, because, which is, again, led by trends. It's yeah. led by what we want. It's led by I should get what I really want at this point and the company should have it and because of that these companies are overproducing and they end up producing a lot more and that becomes a lot of excess which then goes into landfills or at massive discounts if, if they are able to sell it off. And uh, that's uh, what's the trend like? You're right. We have OOTD or GRWM, these trends yeah. like out there all the time. And that just talks about how much consumption is happening on a daily basis. You spoke about how polyester is not a sustainable uh, material for textiles. What are some of the sustainable options that now everyone's looking at? I think the organic ones to begin with because they don't use pesticides and there is a limited amount of water and these are usually uh, these these are usually uh, yeah. easily available they're or easily, they will not take they, some, a lot of chemicals to yeah, produce. Yeah, they, they are usually uh, things that grow and are resistant to pests and are already very, very hardy. So mm. for example, hemp, for example, flax which you get linen out of okay. and uh, organic cotton. Like in India, we have indigenous uh, organic cotton, which mm. is called Kala cotton in Gujarat. It does okay. not require any extra water. It relies solely on rainwater. Okay. It is naturally resistant to pesticides, uh, sorry, to pests. Yeah. It is So it does not require any pesticides. Mm. It is a beautiful product that already exists and has people have been making it for centuries now. Mm. And uh, we have a lot of these options that are available on the synthetic side. Mm. We have Lyocell and mm. we have Ecocell. Mm. These are some new 
kinds of mm-hmm. uh, textiles that companies are creating uh, a full research statistics we don't have how mm-hmm. sustainable mm-hmm. they're going to be in the long run but as of now it is a sustainable option you know i just bought a lyocell trouser so maybe uh, yeah. because i i i i didn't want to buy anything polyester so i just bought that so i'm glad you said that yeah. that it is the sustainable option i did a lot of research before doing that as well um but when you talk about uh, some of these materials not needing a lot of water a lot of attention but the question that people have it or maybe it's the mentality that organic products or sustainable products mm. they are be more expensive than maybe a polyester or maybe some other sort of textiles or fast fashion for that matter mm. um is that just a thought process or is it true to be very honest uh many fast fashion brands are as expensive <laughs> as sustainable <laughs> brands in india we just don't see it like that uh so in terms of price points now in 2024 you do have a lot of sustainable brands in different brackets mm. so starting at a 2500 going up to 15000 mm. you can decide what you want to buy and you will find a lot of options mm. in this space mm. but i think we also need to view it a little differently mm. uh we can't view it like how we view fast fashion yeah. it doesn't have to be a product that you're going to buy today and get rid of tomorrow mm. it should be viewed as someone something that you're buying to keep in your wardrobe that mm. that has a story attached mm. to it that is always going to be a conversation starter for you so it's going to last in your wardrobe for 10 years and then it totally makes up for the amount that you spent on it yeah people don't understand it's fast fashion for a reason you'll forget it very fast and you'll yeah. not be able to use it and it's like our mom sarees right exactly. they yeah. <laughs> they have it since their uh, wedding like they are here yeah. for 20 25 years and they keep repeating it and they keep wearing it um in that case uh, is it only manufacturing newer products with sustainable clothing or are you seeing the market for second hand textiles also growing i see a lot of these pre loved or uh, pre used markets uh, uh, and all of it being uh, socialized as well is that growing that is definitely growing as well uh, see places like sarojini nagar uh, and linking road have always been around right and th- th- you always had carts selling uh, export surplus uh, products out there so people are already okay with buying surplus products mm. now the whole second hand market is also catching mm. up both e-commerce they have stores they have their pop ups everywhere what's happening essentially is one people are more aware they mm. know that uh, what they're doing buying fast fashion brands rapidly changing their style going after trends is largely mm. unsustainable mm. i think another two important drivers are one lack of wardrobe space <laughs> people in big cities don't have elaborate wardrobes if they want to buy more they need to empty out their wardrobes yeah. and then you if you, you also want new stuff all the time and if you're getting something at a slightly cheaper price mm. you will go for it mm. and i don't think people are resistant to wearing something second hand in fact we have a resale program on our website as well mm. and uh, when we launched it it was a huge success we gained like some 12% new customers oh. completely from that so we knew that okay there are people that want to buy okay maybe they want it at a low price point and they are okay with buying the second hand products that's pretty cool because not only it helps in a reuse of a particular product people get to get it at a lower price as you exactly. just pointed out uh, but tell us in all this where does okay stand tell us the story how did it start and uh, you know you have so many artisans in rural areas and they are contributing here what's the story like So Okhai started uh, from an area in Gujarat called Okha Mandal uh, when there was a drought for 4 years and uh, these women that belong to the Rabari which is a pastoral community uh, came together and decided to take their craft which is beautiful Rabari embroidery uh, to the market and that's how it started it started very small through exhibitions through small pop-ups and then it eventually became an e-commerce platform and today we also have a store uh, it started with like a handful of 10 15 women and today they are like 30000 people wow. crafts people not just women but also men across crafts mm-hmm. and across categories in india okay and uh, what are some of the products of course it's clothing but do you do have so there's variety? everything now yeah. there's clothing there's lifestyle products so there's a lot of basketry and all these beautiful grasses that naturally grow all across the country those are being used to create stunning baskets so there's a lot of basketry there's a lot of metal work uh metal work that has been going on for centuries yeah. in, in the country so like dokra uh that that's you have a lot of dokra products you have homeware you have textile you have apparel of course mm. 
we also have uh, some pottery so it's a mix of many things and within each category also we have like a ton of crafts like the blazer i'm wearing mm-hmm. is ajrak this is from yeah, gujarat gujarat yeah then you have embroidery which is from different parts of the mm-hmm. country depending on which craft community did that embroidery mm-hmm. Okay that's very interesting um so what plans next how many stores what kind of expansion because uh, you know when you uh, do start as you said at a lower level expansion is a task right how did that happen what are the next plans you have here so we do plan to be one platform for all the craft that's available in india mm. and online we want to be that one place that where people can come and they can find everything that they've ever heard mm. of in terms of craft mm. and through that not only give your customers something unique but also all the crafts people that are in remote parts of mm. the country mm. are able to get their product out to people in bombay mm. or like even globally uh, on the e-commerce front that on the store front similar i think we would like to have a store in all major cities mm. uh, that should be what a <laughs> next goal hopefully it should happen yeah. soon that'll be uh, amazing so more power mm-hmm. to you on that uh, you know uh, one word which is often used nowadays is minimalism you know yeah. everyone talks about minimalistic living are you seeing that change as a person who's been in the industry for so long fashion designers are talking about it how are they inculcating it in their daily work i think minimalism is honestly one of uh one of the philosophies that goes and comes back around in the design world and i think this is probably just one of those phases uh in terms of adapting that philosophy in work i would say uh keep it clean mm. uh don't over produce don't over consume uh have your design language a little more limited but i wouldn't say that compromise your design language just because you want to be minimalist i think every brand has their own mm. design language and they should stick to that and maybe in that space they can experiment i would look at minimalism more at a philosophical level where you're looking at your processes you're looking at how you want to run your business that should be clean and you know absolutely like mm. uh, to the point yeah. <laughs> yeah so when we talk about uh, just to make it easier when we talk about organic or sustainable clothing what should one look at when they are going and buying one i think the most important thing is to look at the tag mm. uh it should contain uh, all the details about that item mm. so the number one would be the quality or the material mm. that you're buying mm. try not buying polyester because it is plastic acrylic mm. is mm. plastic so stick to natural materials that mm. would be one mm. the first step mm. within natural materials if you can go organic if mm. you can go more sustainable mm. great uh, the other thing would be how transparent is the brand are they really telling you who's making these things are they mm. not telling you who's mm. making these things ask those questions mm-hmm. and the biggest one would actually be to go for things that are classic in nature and not very trend driven mm. uh you know we cherish sarees yeah. forever why not have a wardrobe look the same way like yeah. your sari wardrobe why not have the other ward- wardrobe look like that so go for classics have a few trendy pieces in the middle but s- stick to find your style and go for classic pieces and a lot of sustainable brands are offering that because they don't want to keep over producing either no, and and that's the idea they don't want to over produce and ensure that exactly. the consumerism idea around a lot of textiles is also limited um you know you spear had this organization this amazing one when you talk about funding in general is it easy to get funding for sustainable ventures right now has it changed over years how have you seen that that pan out i think it has changed a lot of uh, investors are now looking at being in the sustainable uh, fashion space or sustainable living space that said uh, you know profits are still important to mm-hmm. anyone who's investing in any business so there needs to be a growth plan uh there needs to be a uh, growth plan not just in terms of profits but i think also the environmental impact so mm. there are investors that would invest in a company purely for the impact that they are creating at a grassroots level mm. or at an environmental mm. level and i think sustainable companies can look for those investors more mm. actively okay and uh, that is easier to get right now yes much easier than it was like 10 years ago for sure that's a, that's a good change yeah. because that's what's happening not only with the it's textile industry it's very encouraging industry. yeah yes. that's that's pretty encouraging um does that also create in a world where we are selling everything with the tag sustainable the issues around green washing where a person is not able to identify maybe they are paying a higher price for a particular product because it's called sustainable 
Have you seen that happen in yes, the industry? Yes, all the time. Yeah. I think green washing. We recently even started seeing craft washing, where you're like, okay, this is a craft-based product made by artisans, but it's not, uh-huh. and uh, it becomes very hard for to identify. Even for us, when we are in the industry, it becomes very hard even for us to identify which brand is actually green washing or craft washing, and which brand is not. And I think it's very important to ask the right questions. At this level, there needs to be a little bit of regulation. Yeah. I think there needs to be certain uh, standards that you need to apply to. You need to have certain certifications, and uh, consumers should ask for that. It's a lot of consumer awareness as well because yeah. you know there was a point in time where a lot of good designs, the cheaper price, and they were available. We just like bought them, and we did not know that it would not last for more than like six, seven yeah. months. It was just written that maybe it is sustainable, but that was not the case. Um, you know the other term associated with fast fashion also is how the supply side has been. One is material. Are there other issues as well on the supply side when it comes to fast fashion? Of course. Uh, Compo- uh, the stuff that happens after you consume it is different. But what on the supply side? I think two th- major things. One is overproduction mm. to meet up with demand, mm. and it's consistent overproduction. Like year on year, you're seeing overproduction, mm. and all these pieces that are surplus. How much of it really goes into this the market? Like mm. like we mentioned before, like the second hand market. Very mm. little. Most mm. of it goes into the landfill. Mm. So that's a big one. The second one is ethical production. So how are the people making all of yeah. this yeah. dyeing the product stitching the product how are they getting paid yeah. what are the health and safety uh, yeah. uh, parameters there yeah. so i think these are some the very important things that one needs to consider if you're running a brand where yeah. are you getting your raw material forms from so like okay is working with artisans that are not always creating raw material mm. sometimes there's surface work like this jacket mm. or there's embroidery mm. so where is that textile coming from mm. so we have to be mindful of where we are getting that from mm. as well okay and how do you reach out to artisans that uh, must also be a task right because you're getting it from everywhere in the country and our country is huge yeah <laughs> uh, we actively uh, are in the craft space and i think people know kai by now we've been there for a while yeah. But in the beginning, it was a bit difficult. Mm. Uh, but we did work with these women in Okha Mandal, and they were mm. our spokespeople. And they were uh. like, "Listen, they've been working with us for a while. This is a genuine enterprise. They are going to pay you on time. So mm. let's work with them. And uh, it is going to be consistent work as well. I think that's another huge problem. Mm. When you're working with the crafts community, you can't just do one collection with them and then be like, "Okay, I'm done with you now. I'm going yeah. to do another collection yeah. with another crafts community because I want some." something new in my brand yeah, yeah. uh what you're doing when you're doing that is you're taking a craft community giving them hope and then abandoning them mm. so it's very important to keep working year on year with the crafts community irrespective of what payment structure you have mm. working with them and giving consistent work to them is more important because that's the only way that community will see artistic growth mm. or even growth in livelihood yeah. that that's correct or intergenerational growth as well yeah, yeah it can pass on to the exactly. next generation and uh one beauty of all the countries there's so much in the hinterlands right there's yes. so much art there's so much talent so you're basically able to use that properly for greater good so that really helps exactly. um tell us uh, more about uh, uh the kind of designs or kind of uh, materials which are trend i wouldn't use the word trending after the conversation that we've had uh but that you are focusing on or you're seeing the market is liking as well ajrak for instance you know people are yeah. liking it we are seeing it everywhere yeah. what are the other things that are coming up i think beautiful hand embroideries are a classic they will always stay in sequins or in metal work or in even even like regular colored threads mm. very intricate embroideries is something on indian wear or even on western wear is something mm. that we are seeing picking up ajrak of course mm-hmm. has become very popular a uh, bollywood celebrity wore it and after yeah. that it just <laughs> it just boomed went to the roof yeah. and uh, we saw a lot of like yeah. uh, sarees ajrak sarees on okhai we have a bunch of ajrak things we saw a huge spike in sales over there mm-hmm. um i think sarees in general has picked up a lot in the last mm-hmm. few years there are many brands that are uh, doing sarees now mm-hmm. and i think a lot of them are doing a great job they're working with weavers so weavers across the country that that have been traditionally working in the sari space have seen a boom mm-hmm. uh people are wearing sarees much more often now you're seeing people having entire in- instagram accounts just yeah. 
showing you how to wear sarees so i think that's really nice that's incredible that's uh, the classic things always remain classic exactly. right um uh, i have to ask you what kind of uh, Uh, advice would you like to give to the viewers there are a lot of them are gen z's a lot of them are the younger millennials so to say to ensure that they of course consume but they consume mindfully what would your tips be biggest tip would be find your style mm. because when you find your style you are able to get classic pieces more easily for yourself mm. uh don't follow trends blindly because they're going to come and go uh, but if you do want to follow trends uh try to again within that get something that you can wear multiple times hmm. and not just once so maybe a white shirt get a white shirt from a good sustainable company <laughs> that you are going to wear for like 2 years and have like several combinations so that would be like my biggest advice to gen z i think find your style find your style and yeah. other things will take place yeah. themselves that yeah. makes sense and uh, you know i i i had so many questions in my mind i think i'm just revisiting them and i forgot what i was going to ask you next but uh, uh, in general do you think social media is something which is maybe good for brands but bad for environment at times when it comes to consumption for textiles so what do you make of that it's a double edged sword <laughs> uh i think consumption has increased a lot uh, since all of these fashion influencers and so many brands with their products have been there yes consumption has increased because of that but social media has also helped a lot of small brands yeah. to get their voice out you know before it existed a small brand didn't know how to reach to a customer you couldn't afford a big store in a big city so how else would you reach out to anyone yeah. right but now i think everyone has a voice and people are using social media for a lot of good stuff also so you're seeing now there's a good mix of people who are promoting consumerism and then there are people who are promoting sustainability that's right and i think that's another advice i would like to give to the gen z follow the right people <laughs> yeah. i think that will influence indirectly your buying choices yeah we use the word influencer in a way different way all the time i think yeah. uh, positive influence and negative influence are two different things but of course i do get your point um i have to ask you what are your ethos as a person who is leading such a big organization uh some tips that you have when it comes to leadership and uh, how many women in the workforce right now <laughs> so uh, we are i think out of the 30000 around 20000 would be women we are yeah. we are women led through and through and it's a uh, create create environment to work in everyone is super focused and everyone is very driven to make a difference uh, in what you know in the world through yeah. what they're doing uh, i think my biggest advice for entrepreneurs would be to just be authentic mm. uh, i think that is the most important thing if you're authentic you you will see that in your work you will see that in your conversations your team will be authentic uh people will be able to be more open with you mm -hmm. and i think that really uh brings a, a very open environment uh, and i think a large reason for that is also because it is women led yeah. so we've naturally had that environment where you are able to discuss problems challenges uh very openly yeah and it's not a struggle so it's yeah so i would i would i would advise authenticity <laughs> authenticity and that would also mean that uh, Okay, I would never follow trends just for the heck of it. It'll be all original, and that's what you've been focusing on from the start as well. I wouldn't call trends bad. I think it, it, through how I've been speaking about trends, it's coming. <laughs> no, of course it's not trends bad. I get. Cool. Yeah, I yeah. think trends are cool. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone follows trends, yeah. including me. Mm -hmm. uh, just be mindful of yeah. how you're following those trends. It, it shouldn't lead to waste. That's it. Yeah. So, so yes, we do. We do follow trends, but. it's difficult for us to manufacture uh, on the back of a trend because a yeah. pipeline is so long we are mm -hmm. sending products to the villages uh, raw material to the mm -hmm. villages it's getting embroidered there then it's coming back then it's getting stitched and then it's going mm -hmm. for sale to the store mm -hmm. so that itself is taking 6 7 months by that time the trend is come and yeah. gone <laughs> so i think that's also another reason why we don't really follow trends that are very quick to come and go but yeah. trends that we know are going to last definitely yeah. like 
anything that's going to last for one or two years or more. Yeah, it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Yes, so just exactly. catch on to that particular uh, trend, so to say. Um, and uh, is India absolutely self-sufficient when it comes to sustainable products? When I say the raw materials, because we are cotton producers, we are polyester producers. If you need any other material, do you think India has all not the fully? There are companies all across the world that are uh, working. Uh, a lot technology companies mm-hmm. that are working on these technologies to produce more sustainable fabrics there is access mm-hmm. so it's not like uh, we don't have access mm-hmm. we have access to those materials a uh, so lot of companies in india are using sustainable materials that are not produced in india mm-hmm. or we don't have those raw materials mm-hmm. available in mm-hmm. india and we are importing them so i would wouldn't say it, uh, there's a uh, issue with the sus- sustenance mm-hmm. uh, or sus- they are able to sustain hmm. even though they are importing and you know the next question the last one on the podcast is a personal one because i see a lot of these because i'm very mindful when i buy a garment whether it's cotton uh, it shouldn't be polyester but when it says recycled plastic or recycled polyester do you think one should go ahead and buy it and what is the longevity of that one so that's another one of those that we don't have enough statistics <laughs> on you know there are so many viewpoints one being that when you recycle a uh, polyester or plastic it produces more plastic and in the mic it produces mm, more mic- microplastics uh, so just let it be mm-hmm. but you also can't let it be uh, it's just adding up more and more and more and by recycling it you are at least using that resource to create another uh, product mm. so i would say that this is t- still in one of those spaces where there isn't enough research So I wouldn't really say go for it or don't go for yeah. it. I think it w- it's still better to go for something that's recycled because yeah. you're at least consuming something which is a s- sitting resource yeah. for you. At this point, I would say go for it. Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay, <laughs> so that answers. And you know, Indians are known to be great recyclers. Yeah. If you are wearing something on Holi, those are the old T-shirts. Then those old T-shirts become something else. And then we have yeah. hand downs from our siblings. I yeah. think we have started practicing sustainability when it comes to textiles. Long back, the trends yeah. of course are changing, but that's good to know. But it was such a pleasure speaking with you, Manora, today to understand a lot of things that are happening in the textiles industry. And you, what you're doing at Okai? That's commendable. So thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Soren. <laughs> it was wonderful speaking to you too. Okay, all right. Uh, I know you do have a lot of questions otherwise as well. So keep writing to us, and we'll get them answered with our guests on the podcast. But thank you so much for tuning in today, and we'll be back with more.